Today we're going to have a look at how to overclock your Ryzen CPU on any Republic of Gamers branded Asus motherboard. So that includes the B350 Strix, the X370 Strix, which is the one that I'm doing it on today, and the two Crosshair motherboards, uh, which is the Hero and the Extreme. So if you have any of those motherboards and you want to get the most out of your Ryzen CPU, this is the video for you. Okay, so on one quick tip around how to get the most out of especially the kind of temperature benchmarking process to make sure that your overclock is rock solid, uh, make sure that you have the latest version of the BIOS installed on your motherboard. This is a little bit of a scary process, but I'll have a video linked in the description below that will show you exactly how to do it. Now, the reason this is very important is because with earlier revisions of these Asus motherboards and pretty much any X370 motherboard, they gave inaccurate temperature readings on Ryzen CPUs. In fact, when I first installed mine, it was telling me that I was sitting at a temperature of like minus 13 degrees Celsius, which unfortunately isn't true or wasn't true. So I installed the latest version of the BIOS and well, it gave accurate temperature readings from there out. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's have a look at the BIOS. Okay, so here we are in the terrifying, beautiful and very exciting BIOS. Um, this is something that if you're new to computers especially, is really scary because it's like the heart of the PC somehow. And if you maybe prod the wrong thing, who knows, you could destroy everything you've spent so much money on. That can't really happen though. There's a lot of fail safes in, so don't be too worried about poking around a little bit. But okay, so for overclocking, the first thing that you need to do is head over to AI Tweaker and have a look in there. So in here, you can see there's a bunch of settings and it kind of tells you more or less what's going on in the PC at the moment as well with the settings that you have installed um, at that time. So you can see here, my CPU target speed is 3950 megahertz, which is what I use from day to day and it's completely solid. If I take it up to four gigahertz, just 50 megahertz up, it's still pretty, pretty stable, but I get some issues occasionally in Premiere Pro when exporting videos, it might crash. Um, so if I just take it 50 megahertz down, uh, I'm set and I have rock solid stability. Now the first setting you'll see is AI Overclock Tuner. Now this seems like a very interesting setting, but I haven't really gotten it to work in any kind of meaningful way. But according to Asus, this is kind of like a bit of software that calculates the optimum overclock for your CPU at a specific RAM setting. So if you go in here, you'll see DOCP5, for example, um, overclocks your CPU while maintaining a RAM frequency of 2,933 megahertz. Like I said, this sounds great on paper, but I haven't actually gotten it to work. So just leave that in auto. Um, now going down to RAM frequency or memory frequency, this is something that's important to know what the memory frequency is of the RAM that you have and um, then try and match the highest speed available because especially with the Ryzen system, um, higher memory speeds definitely do translate into more performance. So I have DDR4 3000 megahertz, so I keep it at 2933. I can probably put it, push it up to 3066. In fact, let me do that and see what it does. But yeah, so highest memory frequency possible with the specific RAM that you have. Now, going down to custom CPU core ratio, this is where you actually apply an overclock. So you go in here and it'll be on auto by standard, but you go into manual and then it gives you access to these two settings. And this is what you set your actual overclock with. So you've got FID, which is the number, which is the actual amount that is, multi that is multiplied by your CPU multiplier to give you your actual memory speed, uh, your actual CPU speed, sorry. So if you have it at 16, for example, it multiplies it by the CPU multiplier and gives you 400 megahertz. So this is, a great way to set a specific overclock because you can take it up by 25 megahertz increments um, using the plus and minus uh, keys on your keyboard. But you can also just type in a specific number. So 160, for example, takes you up to four gigahertz exactly. 
Now, if you're if you're if you haven't actually tested to see what kind of overclocks you can get working on your CPU, I'd recommend starting depending on what CPU you have. But let's say you have a 1700, which has a base clock of three gigahertz, right? I think a good place to start is at 3.5 gigahertz because this is a clock that everybody has been able to get stable on their CPUs, uh, depending on what cooler you have, obviously, but this is a good place to start, I think. So you kind of type in 140 with your FID. The DID you leave alone because this is the kind of divisor. So this shows by how much you divide the 140 figure or your target CPU speed by. So as you see, when you increase it, your actual target CPU speed drops down. Uh, so just leave it in auto and that's the kind of easier way to go about it, I think. Um, but yes, so load up this, th these settings um, and then go into your, in, in, into, into Windows and then do something like IDA 64's uh, um, burn-in test and then run it for about 15 minutes to see what kind of temperatures you're getting. If you're getting below 70, you're in a good spot. Um, I think anything above 70 is a little bit kind of affects stability a little bit on Ryzen CPUs. They're happier under that. And especially for just proper stability, I think, I think 70 should be about the target you're looking at. Um, so if you load 3.5 gigahertz and you're getting 63 degrees, for example, as your maximum burn-in temperature, then you can take it up by 100 megahertz. And if that takes you to 68, then you can take it up a little bit more because you've only got two degrees left to play with. If you take it to 3650, for example, um, and that gets you to about that 70 degree threshold, then I think this would be a really good setting to leave it at. Uh, if, you're more, if you're more brave than that, you can push it a bit further um, or, or increase your cooling solution. So put a better cooler on if you wanna take it even further. Uh, but like I said, I, I, I have my PC liquid cooled and it's still gotten me to a point where this is the most stable overclock with 3950 megahertz. But okay, let's not hang on this too much and go down to EPU uh, power saving mode. Now EPU power saving mode is something I would leave disabled because it essentially just regulates your core clock and your voltages and stuff like that so that your PC doesn't use as much power but I don't know how much of a difference it's actually gonna make when it comes to your actual kind of electricity bill at the end of the month. So if you're worried about performance at all, I would leave this off. TPU is another automatic overclocking setting. So this is something that you go into. There are two settings here. There's TPU one and TPU two. TPU one is a more mild overclock and then TPU two is a bit more hectic. TPU two takes you to about 3.8 gigahertz is, is, is more or less where it takes you to or where it took my specific CPU with. So it's not an extreme overclock, but it gives you very little flexibility because it's one setting that you put in and then that's your overclock. You can't really tune it from there. So I would not mess with that really. Um, especially if you're very worried about stability and you want low temperatures and kind of like you don't want to have to worry about your, your CPU giving any kind of problems like crashing or so on. Uh, performance BIOS um, is also something that I, I just leave it on. I always leave it on auto. Now going down to like DRAM timing control is something that you can play around with. It's to set um, the actual like your cache latency and all of those like numbers other than your memory speed. This is something that I, I don't, I, I just leave on auto um, because yeah, it, it's kind of worked perfectly fine for me. But if you want to try and lower these numbers, uh, you can potentially do that. So you can try and go from 16 to, to 15 to see if you can get a lower cache latency stable. Um, but I would rather have higher memory frequency than lower cache latency. Um, because yes, I think especially with the Ryzen system, that's the most important thing is memory frequency. So I'd kind of leave that alone. Um, now this is where it becomes really terrifying because these are the kind of CPU voltage controls. So this is where you tell the motherboard how much kind of voltage to send the CPU. And this is something you should be very conservative with because you can potentially damage your CPU. Um, but the thing is, so if you have it on auto, for example, and it doesn't actually give me the exact setting here, but it was running at a much higher voltage when I was running with the specific overclock that I have now. And it just, it was, it was a higher voltage than necessary. 
so I actually took it down. I put it in manual mode, or well, actually offset mode, um, um, to have a lower uh, voltage because that's kind of it, it's less harmful to your CPU. Uh, but the thing is, with the you should definitely use offset because what offset does is it takes the setting that you put in there as the maximum voltage that it's going to use. But then when you're doing things like browsing the internet or something that isn't very, isn't very, doesn't require a lot of performance from your CPU, your motherboard actually drops the voltage quite a bit. So that it means, again, there are situations when you're not having as much voltage running through the CPU, which for things like, you know, longevity in your CPU, that's, that's always good to, 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 to have lower voltages, as low voltages as possible, potentially. Um, so yeah, I dropped the voltage a little. I think it was at like 1.45, it was around there, and it just wasn't necessary for the overclock that I was doing. And then when you go down here, you can set your DRAM voltage, um, which I would also just leave on auto because usually the motherboard knows what it's doing and it's not gonna do anything too outlandish. You can maybe try and drop it a little bit, but make sure, go check on forums and see what the best voltage is for the memory that you're using at a specific specific memory frequency. You'll be able to find that information on the internet quite easily, uh, but usually auto is fine. So with all of these settings down here, these are very specific kind of voltage settings for specific situations on your CPU. And this is the kind of thing that, you're, that you use if you're, if you're a professional overclocker, overclocker that has liquid nitrogen on your CPU and you're trying to break world records with. I wouldn't really mess around with this too much, having everything on auto, oh, sorry. There's no shame in having everything on auto here uh, because the motherboard then does everything it needs to to give you this target CPU speed. Um, so there's no chance of you putting in the wrong settings potentially. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any more questions around, around this overclocking or around your specific situation with your PC, do let me know in the comments below. I hope this video was helpful. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.